Welcome back to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where we know that finding discounted properties is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, Mr. Talk to People, and I am telling you this, if I can do it, so can you. So let's get started. This is going to be something unlike any other podcast that we've done on the for the Rhino Tribe for the Wholesaling Inc. podcast because on this podcast I have uh, an, an incredible conversation. We're going to have an incredible conversation with uh, a gentleman out of just outside of New York City. He lives in New Jersey. He has been a part of a billion dollar skyscraper uh, development. Uh, he has been a part of eleven hundred million dollar development. He keeps doing huge deals, but he has also done 116 wholesale deals. How does this all fit together? How does this, I mean, this is going to be the podcast that you listen to, that you understand that the power of thinking big and the power of building up your network is so powerful. So it is with great excitement that I bring on to the podcast, Ken Van Lu from New Jersey. Ken, say hello to everybody. Hello. What's happening, Brett, man? Thank you so much for having me on. I am so excited to talk I'm, I'm to everybody. Excited, I'm excited to have you on because, I mean, this is, you know, it's really interesting, Ken. We talk about on this podcast that the start, right, the foundation of being a real estate entrepreneur is finding discounted properties, finding these opportunities where you have quality conversations with the property owner and they're they're in distress of some sort there's some sort of stress that they want to get rid of this property and we go and we solve the problem and we solve the problem typically with a cash offer a cash as is offer that is the foundation right building the skill of sourcing discounted real estate is the first step of being a successful real estate entrepreneur and then from there you have so many different options right you can buy a bunch of rental properties and build a rental portfolio. You can do fix and flips. You can do development, right? You can get into land. You can get into coaching, all of these things, but it starts with your ability to find discounted property. And you started, I mean, you've been doing this over 20 years and you started kind of backwards to that, right? You you started doing these big projects and then got into wholesaling. So kind of give us a, a, a quick recap of who you are and what your incredible career has uh, consisted of. Well, thank you so much once again for being here and, and welcome. You know, I'm, I'm first and foremost, I've been married uh, 33 years with the same woman for 38 years, have three wonderful kids. We had twins that are 29. My daughter just got married this weekend. My youngest is 23. And, you know, that's, that's the priority and what, you know, made me wake up at five in the morning every day and work till midnight, you know, and after 125,000 hours of working hard, you know, anybody can do it. But, like I mentioned to you in the beginning, I, I, you know, I wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed and I kind of learned in reverse. Um, you know, I was, uh, I studied civil engineering, but I really never became a civil engineer because I couldn't pass the test. So I finally passed the PE test. And by that time I was a construction super. So I knew a little bit about construction. And, you know, as I increased my debt and was six fingers in debt, and had the twins and everything, I was like, you know, I really should get into real estate because I had read the, a book early on when I was 18, Robert Allen, you could buy real estate with no money down. And when I finally graduated in civil engineering, I have a background in civil engineering, you know, I, I won this award on how to design sites. So that was kind of like the first thing about real estate, but I didn't really know anything about real estate. And I started a career, built the six figure debt, and I was, you know, building these projects in New York City when I said one day I have to get involved in real estate. And uh, I stumbled upon a development deal because that's all I knew. I knew how to build buildings. So using other people's experience and other people's money and you know the principles that you spoke about at the onset, you know, finding discounted properties, I found a piece of land that was kind of in the back of an office complex that was just sitting there that had what we call as the highest and best use. And it wasn't a wooded area, if you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And the highest and best use just coincidentally had to <clears throat> align with what was called as a certificate of need from the city or state that says you can build an assisted living. So my first project was an assisted living healthcare project. 
And, uh, you know, I built it out. It was 113 units. And I knew about paying fees, right? So I learned in this formula that I created how to pay yourself nine different ways in a development. And on this first development, I, I could pay myself. I said, if I can get a $10 million deal in the pipeline, you can pay yourself a 5% development fee. I said, okay, that's 500000 That's pretty good. Yep. I said, now I know what I had to build. I said, for general conditions, which pays for your project manager and your super and your project accountant, these are people that kind of manage your business for you, whether it's wholesaling or not. You may manage it yourself, but the money was paying for them. I didn't have to pay for them. So I kind of got a staff that was paid for. And then I made another three and a half percent fee for building it. So on that one project, I made over a million dollars just in fees. And my ownership was rather small because that's when I was just getting started. And that principle applies when you get started in wholesaling, because if you don't have the money, you know, how do you get started? You know, and then I just started applying that when we ended up doing the wholesaling. It was actually 137 deals, I think we did in that one year. But um, it was just fun, you know, and we're here to just show you how to get started, you know. That's incredible. So wait a second. So there was a piece of land that's just sitting there. How did you find that piece of land? Did you know about it? Did somebody tell you about it? Were you looking for it? Did it fall into your lap? Like I yeah. talk about wholesaling land all the time. Now you didn't necessarily wholesale it, but you stuck in the deal. You got ownership and right. you found the piece. Well, I mean, right. it's pretty similar. It's exactly. just you, you stuck in the, the actual development of it. You didn't just say, hey, listen, I'll go lock up this piece of land and I'll assign this contract to you. You actually stayed in the deal. So how do yeah. you find the piece of land? Yeah, you know, it's funny because, you know, we, we talk about whether wholesaling, commercial, whatever it is, you know, I joke about it. You know, people say, oh, you got to get out there and network, you know, and I use some different terminology because I look at things from a different context. Like you can look at the finger or you can look at that as number one, or I'm pointing, you know, there's, there's different contexts. So, you know, you, you really have to, you know, um, you know, I just broke my train of thought. You got to look at it from a different context and, and um, the networking and the networking in the sense that I use proximity as power, you know, and, you know, fortunately, you know, I live in New York city, New Jersey. So people, you know, you'll hear them say, well, it doesn't work in my neighborhood or it doesn't work in my town. And, and I disagree because, you know, in every location in the country, within that location, proc, there is a proximity where there's power. And, you know, whether you get in there and, and I use the word, you got to meet and get into the proximity and then you have to have a gravitational pull. That's a little bit more than other people because you want people gravitating to you. Right. And what I use is I call it merging ecosystems. So networking to me doesn't really work. Right. And, and, you know, I, and I learned a lot of this, you know, through my mentors, you know, you know, Tony Robbins, Sean Callagy, you know, and how to look at the micro distinctions that create maximum impact and, and merging ecosystems is key because it's about what benefits the other person. You know, when you start that conversation, it's about building a, a tremendously deep emotional rapport. Like, you know, Brent, when we started talking, you know, it was about like, how are the kids doing? You know, what are you doing with the wife? You know, you, you know, you continue, you don't travel, you stay at home, you know, you enjoy that. Right. And, and that's, what's really important. And, and, you know, all that comes into play, but you know, the merging of the ecosystems comes with being genuinely interested in what your kids are doing. Like, you know, how's your wife doing? Because when you have that relationship, they're not going to go anywhere else to, to invest. And they're, that cash buyer is not going to go anywhere else because they're going to trust you because you would you would look out for their kid, that you would yeah. babysit for their kid if you had a chance, right? Because yep. you have genuine interest in what you're doing. And I found, I call it the, it was the one third, two third rule. Like, you know, when you're meeting somebody, the objective is to bring them from hello to yes, right? Okay. And when you're talking to them, if, if you're going to talk two thirds at a time, you're most likely not acknowledging them enough. You're not listening. I think we, we've had some conversations on listening, you know, where I kind of laugh. My, my friend Sean Callagy has this thing, level five listening. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I talk to people, they listen negative one. Like you ask them a question, they answer a whole different question. And you know, a lot of times it's frustrating, but I learned to play with communication because you can ask the questions different ways, 
where you have to help them discover kind of what you're asking them. But once you, you know, once you build, as I think what we're really getting to is the ability to take your networking skills to another whole level where people just love being around you because you make them feel good. You're acknowledging them. You're validating them. You know, you're, you're serious in what you do um, and you have a gravitational pull. And, and, and that's what it's all about. You know, it's incredible. And listen, the, the, the moral of that story is learn how to listen. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, and, and not only that, Ken, but you, you know, you asked me before we went live on this thing, you asked me about the family. You asked me about what was going on. It wasn't surface level. You actually cared. You actually wanted to know you shared with me what was going on. And and that's just an instant connection an instant yes. relationship and, and merging yeah. the two different ecosystems. Like you say, it truly is, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I think that that's where you start. And as long as people understand what it is that you do professionally, if people understand, you know, what value you can provide to them uh, in a, in a, in, in that business setting or in a professional setting, uh, they're going to think about you before they think about the other people because you made them feel unbelievable. You know what I mean? It's so so true. to, to go about, did you get that piece of land from uh, networking from, 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 you know, that and that, that's what, that, that's what it was like till, till this day, Gabe Kalenda, the architect that introduced me to the dentist are still relationships with me. Right. And, the dentist and I was the one that had the, 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 the dentist was the one that had the land, you know, I ended up, you know, selling it off, but I kept in touch with his son over the years. I still know Dr. Lowen, um, Gabe Kalenda, you know, he's in his final stages. He's, you know, in the mid eighties now, but I, you know, you know, but these are relationships and the team that I built because, you know, I used that, ecosystem merging, you know, with like Bill Strohmeyer, he was the head of the building department. Bill Saville was my attorney that, that took care of, you know, my, my stuff, tectonic engineer and rich, um, you know, you know, these are guys I kept in touch with, you know, and if I go into those areas of, you know, Bridgewater, you know, these are my dream team, you know, and these are the relationships that I built. And, you know, I, you know, people, whether it's wholesaling or we were in wholesaling, you know, whether it's a buyer's list or a list of investors, you know, you have your dream team, you know, your, your people that you reach out so that you don't have to try to be jack of all trades and master of none. You know, you call someone and let them remember everything, you know, because our mind is not designed to remember. It's designed to create, you know, and yeah. that's why I, you know, I'm always big on information retrieval systems and systems, you know, around finding and funding and facilitating uh, real estate investing. And that's really, I mean, that's your, why don't you pop up your book here on camera, right? The modern wealth formula, right? Modern wealth building formula. There it is. Um, incredible. I mean, you could see, you should see who has endorsed this book here, but yeah, um, got a few going. What, I mean, basically the, the, to sum up that it is uh, how to buy real estate with other people's money. Right. Yeah. And, and we're not just talking about, uh, a two bedroom, one bath house. We're talking about some big, massive pieces of land, pieces of yeah. development, pieces of opportunity. Like this is like some big time things, but it's really the principles of what we have that, that, that we're taught for these two bed, one bath condos. It's very similar to what you're teaching here on bigger projects. You're just doing it with a bigger mindset. Is that right? Exactly. Like I, I'll keep it as simple as this. So, you know, Probably, you know, most people getting started have had the experience of seeing somebody renovate their bathroom or kitchen, or you've probably driven through a neighborhood and saw a house get built, you know, and you watched it over time as you drove by for six months. And the bottom line is, you know, building a skyscraper is just stacking houses on top of each other, right? There's still a sequence. There's still an approval process. There's still a finding. There's still a funding. There's still a facilitating. So whether you're finding funding or facilitating for a wholesale deal or a skyscraper, it's still the same. Mm. And, you know, it's just a lot longer in this instance because a skyscraper, 30 stories will take you two years, 18 months. You'll have the first seven floors open and then you're turning floors over thereafter. But, you know, it's just a time difference. But when you break it down like that, it's just a sequence. Like when you're renovating a kitchen, you take the walls out, you re-rough so the electrical outlets are in the right place, you change the plumbing, you put the sheetrock back on, you tape spackle, you put the cabinets on, put the countertop, put the kitchen sink in, bring in the appliances, don't forget to put the flooring in. But it's the same thing, you're just doing it over and over again. And like, 
like 15 of those are happening at the same time on the floor. There's like 15 bathrooms, you know? Yep. So, you know, once you just go, okay, like I can like see that happening a little bit out here expanding where I don't have to worry about everything. Cause a lot of it takes care of itself. You yeah. Know? And, and it's all about, like I said, the systems, but you know, just to stick with the basics, you know, the book um, is finding. So how do you differentiate yourself and ecosystem merge to find deals? How do you use that same principle to then get people that want to give you money and make it a win-win situation? So when I got my first deal, you know, I found it through ecosystem merging, building deep emotional rapport. I then put together a package like you put together in anything and go, okay, this is going to be whatever, just for conversation purposes, a hundred grand. The bank's going to give me, you know, 80% of it or whatever. I want to buy it in cash. You know, I'm going to make this much return. So divide the return divided by the investment. That's yep. going to be your rate of return. Does it meet the criteria? Move forward. It's, it's it's a simple math. Like, and I wasn't, you know, smart in math, but most people can, you know, grab a calculator, divide two numbers and figure out what the loan, like what the bank's going to give you, you know? And, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty simple. Like there's a deposit and then there's a loan, you know, and that is what we call is the stack of money, you know? And, you know, if you understand that the same principles apply with finding, with funding, building deep emotional rapport, instead of asking them to find deals for you, you're asking them for money, right? And you got, and you want to get good at asking people for money because you're kind of in the money game. Yeah. And then, you know, the facilitation process for anything, you know, when you went to school and took your first subject, you didn't know it like that. When TTP, you know, Brent did his first deal, you know, he didn't know everything, you know, he had, no. he had you know, it was like an 800 pound gorilla. He, he slowly got his arms around it, you know, and it's like anything else. You, you kind of learn as you go. Yeah. But the key is, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm like everybody, you know, I was scared, afraid. Um, I just had, you know, you know, this New York City and, you know, you know, one of the projects uh, we used to have Sammy the Bull Gravano come visit, you know, he was a big gangster. So there was a lot of you know, underlying things going in New York and you learn street smart and, and that applies in the business. But, you know, anybody, I think it's important here because, you know, people getting started or, or a lot of times you hear people say, well, I don't have the experience or I don't have the background. And, you know, I'll just leave you, you know, not that I'm leaving you yet, but that's kind of a story. I'm going to leave you that that's a story and you have to stop telling yourself that. Yeah. All right. The second thing is, um, you know, think about this deep emotional rapport thing and, and about making it bigger than yourself and realize that there's a lot of money out there and there's people that want to help you. You know, that's why Brent's here to help you get started. Yeah. So if you have people that want to help you and you have the mentality that there's money there and you can learn how to feel confident about yourself and ask for it, because no matter what your experience is, you can do this. This is a not a hard, complicated thing, um, real estate investing compared to like what some of you probably have done out there raising families or, you know, high tech stuff you're doing. This is easy compared to that. I mean, right. I think you'll agree with me, Brian. It's not rocket science, right? Listen, when I'm at work, <laughs> that's the easiest part of my day. Trust me. <laughs> with little kids, I mean, you know, little kids, I mean, it's wild. But listen, you know, what I think is really important here, Ken, is I really like this, 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 uh, the four, the three F's that you're talking about find, fund, and facilitate. And, and as you're, as you're going through this, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, wholesaling is finding. And then uh, somebody else is funding this. So it's great. We find these opportunities, whether they are coming from somebody else in our network, like a referral, or whether we're going direct to the, uh, to the property owner, uh, or we're getting them from an auction or the MLS or whatever else. There's a lot of different techniques there, but we're finding these opportunities, yeah. right? Somebody, we're putting them in front. We're, we're presenting just like you are. Just like you were like, okay, I've got this piece of land. Now I got to find somebody that'll give me the money. I got to take this to a bank. I got to take this to private investors to give me the yeah. deposit and take it to the bank to get the, the stack of money that you were talking about. It's the same thing we do with our cash buyers. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, here's the deal. Here's what's going on with this property. Here are the details. This, that, this is why it's exciting. Nobody knows about this. This is a huge opportunity. Here's the potential of this thing. And yes. then the only thing that we don't do as a wholesaler is really facilitate. Facilitate's really 
really the yeah. the building, the construction, the rehab, all of that things. Now, what is natural in our business is we go from wholesaling. We do wholesaling, wholesaling, yeah. wholesaling. And then all of a sudden we go, okay, well, I want to get the whole pie in this. I'm going to start doing the flips. And then you start getting into facilitating that and yeah. really building up what you say is your crew. But I love that every single one of those steps, Ken, you're talking about uh, merging the ecosystems. Yes. Somebody is part yes. of that process. Yeah. It's three parts to that process. And you are merging those ecosystems the same yeah. way we should be doing with our teams or yep. the people giving us referrals and our network with the cash buyer database and then potentially with contractors and and yep. um, all the people that that are going to do the work and, and and manage it if we decide to keep those properties so i think that that's beautiful mm. find fun facilitate merging those ecosystems guys i'm telling you this is good stuff this is yeah. really good so this is top level this is yeah, really and, great ken yeah and just to elaborate i, I want to just uh, expand everybody's mind a little bit um, related to facilitation, right? So in a world that I came from in New York City, facilitation actually starts and you're actually facilitating the process of wholesaling. It may not be the type of facilitation where you, you, know, you have a, a development that you'll facilitate that process or even if you're facilitating a large, uh, you know, a large portfolio. But what I want to bring to, to the to the you know the listener's attention is to build a skyscraper in New York City, you have to build it on paper first, right? Sure. And we used to have these pre-con periods where we would, you know, get all the long lead items, like we would figure out, you know, how long would it take to get the curtain wall fabricated, what had to be ordered first, what was the sequence of operation, what was the logistics of the site. And all of these little things um, facilitating that process, you know, I just want you to um, think about it like in wholesaling, you know, think about systemizing what you're doing because you want to try to reduce as much friction in no matter what you do, right? And friction could be by just you trying to do everything yourself, right? So I always believe, you know, and, you know, for, for a, a 59 year old guy, I'm pretty good technology wise. But, you know, one of the things is, is information retrieval, you know, and, you know, I uh, I just use Evernote and I, I read a paper called The Secret Weapon one time um, on how to set up Evernote. But I have like 4000 notes at my fingertips at all times about like anything that I need. And I set up little shortcuts on my phone and I set up all these little systems because, you know, through the years of, you know, you know, having breakdowns, you realize like there's always a way to improve your systems, <laughs> period. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, always, always, you know, like even last last week, I don't have my phone with me here, but someone gave me an app. I was in North Carolina and uh, locking up the uh, that acreage. And the guy's like, you know, you need to get this app. Um, and, and, and it was just unbelievable. It gives you uh, and now I can't find it. But it shares um, it shares tax lot numbers, um, all the information about the property, and I promise I'll give that to your uh, listeners. Is it called? Uh, what is this? Well, the listeners know PropStream does that. Um, yeah, PropStream does it too. Yeah. But um, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> all mean, right. Yeah. 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 So yeah, uh, you can definitely get all that information there. Get get read between the lines with PropStream. It's fantastic. But yeah, uh, yeah. so Ken, how do we? How do you go from um, finding the deals and then building in that you actually have ownership in the deals after the project is done and facilitated? I mean, is it just part of your fee up front? How do you bake that into this deal? Yeah, great question. So. I'll give you an example on one deal that we did. And I joke because um, my high school sweetheart <laughs> went to another high school our senior year in Chester, New Jersey. And there was this restaurant the Lars at the Larson's Turkey Farm where, you know, you'd literally was home style cooking. And I really couldn't even afford it back then. You know, I was just uh, scraping up money to get gas in the tank to go visit her. But I was able to buy the place um, last year. And it was uh, 28 acres, and we're going to restore the restaurant. And uh, fortunately, was able to um, 
make a deal with the CVS pharmacy on a 20 year lease. We made another deal with the city to do affordable housing. Uh, they allowed us to do some market rate housing so we can actually make some money. And then we have a 20,000 square foot office building. But the way that I structured that and the way that I even used to structure my wholesale deals, because I would pay investors on my wholesale deals just 20 percent annually, pay them every six months. People would just hand me checks. You know, one of our sources was auctions and stuff. But in this case, um, I heard that this property was in foreclosure. Um, it was a six million dollar foreclosure. Same thing what we were talking about, a property undervalued. Right. Um, so, you know, I figured, let me get cute. <laughs> and, and I offered two million and uh, believe it, they came back at three and I ended up buying it for two point eight. So now I had this deal in the in the pipeline kind of because I had a relationship with CVS. I'm like, if I can sign a deal with CVS um, for five hundred eighty five thousand dollars a year, that makes that pad when I'm done building it worth eleven million bucks. So now I go and I go, OK, I need two point eight to buy it. So I go and I raise three point seven. So I buy the property, um, me and my partner, I bring the money in. And, uh, you know, we, we, we do it 50 50 and then we syndicate the CVS. So we we carve out. We, I reverse engineer in my syndication. Right. So I reverse engineer. I carve out on what rate of return I want to give to that investor. Right. So say I want to give them like 20 percent with a certain IRR to meet a criteria that I know most people won't say no to. Mm -hmm. And then I reverse engineer on how much I got to give away so that I get the big, big piece. Right. I'm not I learned the opposite of what I didn't get a lot before. I know when people syndicate and do things, you know, register and all that stuff, they get 35. I like to give 35 and keep the 65. So on this deal, we were able to sell off 33 percent, raise 3.7 million, use all the money to engineer the entire site. I'm going to get the CBS approved by November. I'm going to break ground, start paying myself to build it. And then I sold off the affordable housing for like 550. The restaurant, I'll get a million commercial office, I can either build myself or sell it for maybe 1.5 affordable housing. I'll build myself and I'm good to go. <laughs> I love it. I, it gets me so excited. I mean, that's a lot of work. It is. That's, that's a lot of work of, uh, you know, putting all that together and organizing all that. And it's going to probably take what, 24 months. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be building for a while. Yeah. The CVS actually I'll build and have that up open in six months. And then the rest will just, you know, thereafter. But, yeah, we're going to break ground no matter what day I get the approval. I don't care if it's snowing on the ground. Um, I've learned to build skyscrapers in the middle of the winter. We'll use temporary heat and we're going to go full blast. <laughs> so I love it. I love yeah. it. Ken, let's wrap this thing up. Give people yeah. that are just starting out. This is their first real estate podcast they've ever heard. They're really excited. They yeah. they want to find these discounted properties. They, they, they've done enough research to understand wholesaling is where you start. What, what advice do you give them, whether it be real estate or just mindset or whatever it is, what point them in the right direction, Ken? Yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, the, the whole fine fund and facilitate um, and modern wealth building formula, being an all state athlete has a little bit of a sports twist to it. You know, and even if you're not a sports person, you can relate it, you know, so you kind of look at, you know, where you're at in the lineup and no, no matter where you're at in the lineup, whether you're the leadoff hitter or the cleanup hitter or, you know, down in the, you know, the pitcher's position, it doesn't really matter because you're just establishing where you're at and worrying about what I call is, a sensory acuity. And, you know, when I was 17, you know, I, I think I mentioned, you know, I, I couldn't figure out how Robert Allen was buying, you know, property with no money down, but I couldn't even afford a, a car. And I learned about sensory acuity. And what I really want to leave you with is that I had this duster that I didn't even start when I bought it. And when I got it started, I pulled up to light. I just got my license. And this Trans Am pulled up alongside of me. And I was like, wow, that's the nicest car I've ever seen in my life. And what I didn't realize, it was a sensory acuity because the next day I saw two. And by the end of the week, I saw 10. And, you know, there's there's opportunities in front of you that you don't see. Right. So, you know, you know, clear your slate, you know, forget about what you already know, you know, and and have an open mind. And just go out there and prepare yourself for the opportunity. You know, that the, the old cliche, luck is preparation meeting opportunity. And hang out with guys like Brent 
And, you know, you know, I always I always suggest, you know, checking out my book because, you know, I started with nothing. Um, I was not the sharpest tool in the shed. And thank God, you know, I was able to write about a formula that works for wholesaling, fixing and flipping, commercial real estate, land development, multifamily. You can go out and have some fun with it. The Modern Wealth Building Formula. And you can check it out at KenVanLu.com. Discover how. That's Is it. that the best way for people to reach out? Do you have any social media that people reach out or, uh, you know, direct message you or, or, or email yeah. you? Or what, what's the yeah. best way if people just want to say, Ken, you're the man. Congrats. You know thank you, thank you for asking. You know, I have a tremendous YouTube channel. I give daily content every day. We're knocking it out of the park on that. Awesome. Um, I have a awesome Instagram, TikTok. I'm almost up to 20,000 people. So we're, we're getting a following. My LinkedIn's 15,000 people. But yeah, you know, come hang out with us. We got all kinds of great things going on. You know, I was a, a real estate advisory firm for years in New York City. So I helped other developers build $100 million projects also. So if is anybody that just, just in New York, Ken, or is that nationwide you can help? Um, I can help nationwide. Yeah, I've, I've, I've consulted advisory all over the world. Um, you know, they taught me that if you can go build skyscrapers in New York City, that's like playing in the all-star game. Everything right. sports with me. And once you play in the all-star game, you can play anywhere. Yeah. You know, and uh, who's ever just getting started, whether it's like a single, double A, triple A ball, football, volleyball, whatever the sports are. You know, the modern wealth building formula just gives you a, a, a view and an approach. And when you change your view and change your approach, you change your life. It's that simple. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Ken, for joining on the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. Now, guys, a couple resources. Uh, prop stream, you can get that at ttpdata.com, ttpdata.com. Definitely check that out. It, I'm telling you, every serious real estate investor has access to PropStream. It is absolutely phenomenal. And if you are interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing, it is the TTP family. It is the TTP coaching program. Go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. That's wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. Check it out. Check out all the testimonials. Check out what the program's all about. You're going to have to scroll for a while because we keep adding uh, success stories to that every single day, every week. Uh, so check that out. If it, if it feels good in your gut, sign up for a call. I look forward to working with you personally. And that's it. Thank you again, Ken. You are the man. It was, uh, I, I love this. I love this conversation. I love thinking big. I love just so many opportunities with, with working with your friends and doing amazing things that are long lasting in this business. So thank you. And to everybody out there, I encourage you as always to talk to people. I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.